Situated on a narrow strip of land next to Spain, a land of ancient fierce warriors, from where many explorers came from, a land of discovery. Let us venture forth into Portugal and discover its history and its people. Before Roman times, the area of what is now Portugal was inhabited by the Lusitani people. So fierce was their resistance against the Romans that the latter saw fit to rename the province after them. During Roman rule, the province served as an important agricultural center for the empire. During the gradual collapse of the Western Roman Empire, a Germanic tribe called the Suebi from Gaul made their way slowly towards the Iberian Peninsula, crossing over the Pyrenees Mountains in 406 CE. They were able to conquer most of Lusitania until they themselves were eventually subdued by the Visigoths, another Germanic tribe from the east. There are no written records after this time up until 550, when most of the Suebi were reconverted to Christianity. When a Visigothic civil war happened in 711, Moorish warriors under Tariq ibn Ziyad landed in Gibraltar to interfere. This would slowly lead to the Umayyad Caliphate conquering almost the entirety of the Iberian Peninsula. The Muslims even managed to capture Olisipo, or modern-day Lisbon, in 716. Muslim rule of the Iberian Peninsula would last until 1492, when the Reconquista would alter the very shape of the peninsula's future. The origins of Christian resistance against Muslim rule can be traced back to a Visigothic leader named Pelagius, who would rally all the remnants of Visigothic armies to rebel against their Moorish overlords in 718. They were able to defeat the Moors in 722 during the Battle of Covadonga, and he was then proclaimed as the king of a newly founded kingdom of Asturias. This would start a series of events that would gradually lead towards a reconquest of Christian territories in the Iberian Peninsula and the creation of the country of Portugal, the Reconquista. At the end of the 9th century, a small minor county based in the area of Portus Cale was established by Vimara Perez on the orders of King Alfonso III of Leon, Galicia, and Asturias. After annexing the county of Portugal into one of the several counties that made up its realms, King Alfonso III named Vimara Perez as its first count. The county slowly grew in size and so did its importance in events to come. It even had independence depending on who ruled the Leonese throne. By the 11th century, Henry of Burgundy merged the county of Portugal and the county of Coimbra. And by June 24, 1128, the Kingdom of Portugal was founded. It was during the Battle of São Mamede that Portugal was born as a nation. Henry's son became the very first king after the Treaty of Zamora in 1143 and after being officially recognized by the Pope in 1179. By the 12th and 13th centuries, the succeeding Portuguese kings would expand the borders of the fledgling kingdom into what is now the present-day borders. By the 15th century, Portugal became one of the leading kingdoms in terms of exploration. One such explorer, Henry the Navigator, became famous for improving on and even pioneering new sailing techniques that would push the dainty little caravels of the Portuguese fleet to their limits. This continued on until the 16th century, where Portugal became a naval powerhouse. They made their way through and around Africa, the Far East, and even to South America. In 1498, Vasco da Gama discovered a route to India by way of the Cape of Good Hope. Such was the importance of Portuguese discoveries that they were even applied by other naval powers. This was the start of the Portuguese Empire. They hoarded loot, expanded their claims around the world, and established trade routes to resource-rich areas around the world, most importantly in South America, 
in the territories of present-day Brazil. However, as all empires do, Portugal slowly fell into decline. By the 16th century, it saw its influence gradually decreasing. Between 1580 to 1640, the kingdom was in a personal union with Spain. The former had little to no foreign policy, and the next few years would see Portugal on the brink of collapse due to foreign wars and internal strife brought about by previous events. In the early 19th century, Napoleon Bonaparte invaded the Iberian Peninsula, and the entire Portuguese court moved to Brazil. King João VI returned 14 years later to rebuild the dying kingdom. However, after his death, a civil war between his two sons erupted that would seriously affect the future of the kingdom. It ended after the signing of the Convenção de Évora Monte, which emphasized and codified a return to a liberal and constitutional version of the monarchy. Liberalism and republicanism took their roots thereafter, and more and more of the population were keen on trying out this new way to govern. On February 11, 1908, the king, Carlos I, together with his son, were assassinated by revolutionaries. This helped in weakening the state of the already declining monarchy. After the revolution of 1910, a republic was founded with Manuel de Ariaja as the first elected president. Internal strife proved to be too much for the populace, and authoritarian rule became the sought-after form of government after the republican experiment. A coup d'etat occurred on May 28, 1926, marking the beginning of the Estado Novo, which would end on April 25, 1974. The Estado Novo was founded by Antonio de Oliveira Salazar, who deemed that the internal problems of the country could only be solved with an iron fist. The Portuguese Estado Novo became a founding member of NATO in 1949 and joined the United Nations in 1955. It opposed all forms of leftist ideology and sought to revive the old worldwide empire of Portugal of which it failed to do, leading to the beginnings of the Carnation Revolution, which would depose the dictatorship once and for all, after which the Third Republic was born. Portugal's economy has undergone significant changes in recent years. In the late 20th century, Portugal experienced rapid economic growth, particularly after joining the European Union in 1986. However, the global financial crisis of 2008 hit Portugal hard, leading to a severe recession and necessitating a bailout package from the EU and International Monetary Fund in 2011. Since then, Portugal has implemented structural reforms aimed at reducing public debt, improving competitiveness, and fostering economic growth. These efforts have helped Portugal rebound from the crisis with steady economic recovery and improvements in various sectors such as tourism, technology, and renewable energy. One of the key drivers of Portugal's economy is tourism, with its rich cultural heritage, beautiful landscapes, and sunny climate attracting millions of visitors each year. Additionally, Portugal is a major exporter of products such as textiles, cork, and wine, contributing significantly to its economy. Moreover, Portugal has emerged as a leader in renewable energy, particularly wind and solar power, showcasing its commitment to sustainability and innovation. As of the latest data, Portugal's GDP stands at approximately $255 billion. The flag of Portugal, or the Bandera das Quinas, is composed of two vertical stripes of differing colors, green on the hoist and red on the fly. The national coat of arms is centered between the border of the two colors. The coat of arms is made up of a red and white shield with seven castles, representing the victory over the Moors and the seven fortresses conquered and taken from them. Inside the white portion of the shield, 
are another five blue shields, representing the five kings killed by Afonso I, first king of Portugal. The red-colored stripe represents the blood of those who died for Portugal, whilst the green one represents hope. The capital of Portugal is located in Lisbon. It has a land area of 92,000 square kilometers, or roughly 36,000 square miles. It is bordered by Spain to the east. The northern parts are characterized inland by mountainous and hilly areas, as well as fertile land, while the south stretches into drier plains with rolling hills and a broad coastal plain. The highest point in Portugal is located in Ponta do Pico, which stands at roughly 2,400 meters or 7,900 feet above sea level. The climate of Portugal is classified as Mediterranean, with varying weather patterns depending on the area. It is mostly hot during the summer and temperate during the winter. The average annual temperature numbers at 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Portugal has a population of around 10 million people, 95% of which are Portuguese. The official language is Portuguese, as well as being the demonym for anyone born in the country. 80% of the country is Catholic, whilst 15% classify themselves as not belonging to any religious group. The 5% are other Christian denominations. The median age for Portugal is 46 years old, which makes it an aging population. Let's explore some delicious dishes from Portugal, each with its unique origins and significance in Portuguese culinary culture. First on our list is Francis Sinha, a hearty sandwich believed to have originated in Porto. This iconic dish features layers of bread, cured ham, pork sausage, fresh sausage, and steak or roast meat, all smothered in melted cheese and topped with a hot, thick tomato and beer sauce. Francis Sinha is often enjoyed as a satisfying meal, perfect for lunch or dinner, especially in the cooler months. Next, we have pastéis de nata, delightful egg tart pastries with a rich history dating back over 300 years. Originating from Lisbon, these simple yet decadent treats are made with flaky pastry crusts filled with creamy custard, sprinkled with cinnamon and powdered sugar. Pastéis de nata are a popular choice for breakfast or dessert, enjoyed with a cup of coffee or tea throughout the day. For a savory snack, consider trying bifana, a beloved Portuguese sandwich made with sautéed pork, seasoned with garlic and spices, served in a soft bread roll. Often enjoyed as a late-night snack or a quick bite on the go, Bifana is a favorite among locals and visitors alike, offering a flavorful and satisfying taste of Portuguese street food culture. Lastly, let's savor feijoada, a transmontana. A traditional dish hailing from the Transmontano region in northern Portugal. This hearty stew features a rich combination of beans, pork, and smoked sausages, simmered with kale and potatoes to create a comforting and nourishing meal. Feijoada a Transmontana is typically enjoyed during festive occasions, family gatherings, and celebrations, showcasing the robust flavors and culinary traditions of Portugal's diverse regions. Portugal has been the birthplace of several notable figures throughout history. Among them is Cristiano Ronaldo, a prominent football player known worldwide for his talent and achievements. Another influential figure is Vasco da Gama, who made significant contributions to maritime exploration by discovering the Cape of Good Hope establishing a vital sea route between Europe and Asia. Additionally, Anthony of Padua, a revered saint in the Catholic Church, holds a special place in the hearts of devout Catholics. And Ferdinand Magellan led a groundbreaking expedition sponsored by Spain, 
which resulted in the first documented circumnavigation of the Earth, marking a significant milestone in maritime exploration. If you liked this video on Portugal, you'll love the next one.